you're thankful for the presence of the Lord that we feel here in this service tonight. What a wonderful touch of heavens in this house. Hallelujah. That's it. Worship him tonight. God, praise God. God bless every one of you for being here tonight. And all of our guests, thank you for coming. Amen. Welcome to our family. Amen. We're glad you're a part of us tonight. And we want you to worship the Lord with us. Amen. God's got something for each and every one of us. Amen. The Bible said, they that hunger and thirst. That's the key. If you're hungry and you're thirsty for righteousness, you're going to get what you need. I said, you're going to get what you need. Praise God. What a, what a great revival we're having with Brother and Sister Phillips. Amen. We want him to come tonight. Amen. We want him to preach to us. Amen. We'll be back in revival next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock next Tuesday night. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Invite people to come with you to the house of the Lord. Amen. It's revival time. I said, it's revival time. It's time for the kingdom to be expanded. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's expand the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Brother Phillips, come take your liberty tonight. We love you. We're glad you're here with us. Come on, let's give it unto the Lord. Come on, he's good to us. Jesus is good. chance. I believe you come here by divine appointment. Come on, I believe God is going to do something out of the ordinary. Something happens when faith shows up. Something begins to move when faith begins to show up. Sometimes we don't understand the situation that we're in. You got to let your faith out. Faith is like a lion. Just turn it loose. Hello, come on. You take an old souped up wild, wild cat, turn him loose. He'll clear a path, I promise you. It's an honor to be here tonight. I give honor unto Pastor and Sister Smith. I love these folks. I know you do. I love your pastor and his wife. Come on, you got a great man of God. <laughs> I, um, before we get into the word, I, I, I really got something. Hand me my jacket there, please. Okay, just just stay with me, okay? We, we, we get to the word here in just a moment. Come here, son. Put it on. There's a prophetical anointing on you, son. It's there. And it runs deep. God called you from birth. And you can't run from this. It's so strong, I can smell the anointing. It's there. You'll see many miracles. You'll see many people filled with the Holy Ghost. But in the midst of all things, God has to break. 
the blessing always outshines the breaking. It always does. It always will. You see that man of God right there? You honor him. I know he's dad. He's not just dad. He is the pack. Come on. He is a headship in your life. It's so powerful. Come on, I can feel it just radiating from you. There are times that you walk into a building and you can tell everything that's going on. There are times even before you pull up on the churchyard, God begins to let you know what is about to take place in the service. That don't happen by chance. That don't happen by just a good hunch. No. That happens by divine word from the Lord. And son, the word is in your mouth and it's time. God is about to start preparing you, son, to step into that place. When he starts talking, he's going to talk to him first. And this is what he's going to say. You remember these words. Son, you got to obey God. I don't care what everybody else is saying. I don't care what everybody else is doing. You've got to obey God. Shut up, I tell you. Yes! Lay your hands on him, Elder. Come on, lay your hands on him. Lay your hands on him. Come on! God is raising up some men in this last day that carry the word of God. Come on, he's raising up men in this last day that carry a prophetical anointing. my wife I don't do that much let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 21 it's an honor to be here I, I'm, I'm so excited some of y'all sitting on edge like oh my god what's about to take place see I like to keep people guessing because once you can keep your enemy guessing, he don't never know what's going to take place. Matthew 21, verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also ye, ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and it shall be done. In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Our text begins to deal with faith. And the next verse begins to deal with a greater faith. Not only do, do you got to speak it, but you got to believe it. Why are we going to say something to God or really petition God and not believe it? The mountain that's standing before you could be the very thing that God is saying, wake up and speak to it. I want to talk to us a little while about take the limits off your faith. Take the limits off your faith. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Right as you're being seated, thank you, thank you. You see, the building can only hold so much. Why? Because it's limited to that capacity.
city. Come on, you can be seated. We have to understand that what that once we come to a limit and once we come to a place that we think that we cannot go go beyond anymore, the Lord is saying, hey, how about take the limits off? See, see, I've got a 2020 truck, and this thing has a limit switch on it, and it shuts off at 98 miles an hour. Shuts off. Look, it won't pull anymore. Because it has a limit, it'll cost you something to take the limits off. It'll cost you something to climb higher in God. It'll cost you some time in prayer. It'll cost you some time on your face. It'll cost you some time in study. It'll cost you some time in being faithful. Come on, it'll cost you something to walk with God. In order to get to that place that you are wanting to go, you've got to take the limits off yourself. We always belittling our own self. We are telling ourselves that we can't when God is saying you can. We allow the enemy to come in and take our words and beat us up with our own words. And yet God is saying, hey, you are greater than your own words. But we'll never step beyond the limits of what we say to ourselves. Can I take this towel? Praise God. I wish they'd outlaw every one of them. A horse cannot come to the full place of pulling until he realizes he's stronger than what he's already been pulling. You can never begin to step to the place in God that God is saying, I'm calling you here, but first, you've got to deal with where you are. In order to deal with you, I don't know about you, but I know how God talks to me, and this is what he says at times. Get up. Let's go pray. You ain't got time to play around. Come on, it's time to cry out to God. God, hey, he's very serious about his kingdom. He's very serious about his business. But once we take the limits off us, some of us in here, we've been believing for a miracle, believing for a miracle, believing for a miracle, believing for a miracle. Don't ever quit believing. Once you quit believing, you done lost a battle. You done lost a miracle. Come on, hey. Take, take something off you. It's time to speak to that mountain. It's time to tell that devil, hey, you go take a hike somewhere. I'm going to have the miracle. I'm going to get the blessing. I'm going to get everything that Jesus is calling me to get. And we wonder sometimes why God takes such a long time See, I travel all the time and pull in my trailer. I hate two-lane roads. I hate them. You know why? You can't pass nobody. Oh, Jesus, I just can't stand it. It's like looking at a cookie through a window. I can't stand it. That's the quickest way to lose weight. Praise God. But we allow the adversary to come in and talk to our mind and keep us from reaching to that full potential. A faith that has never been through the fire is never going to reach the mountaintop. First, there has got to be a brokenness. Second, there has got to be a healing. He allows you to be broken, and then he heals you, and then he breaks you, and then he heals you. You know why? So, so that we won't get discouraged in our brokenness. But it's in the middle of our brokenness that God is taking us to another dimension. It is in the middle right of your brokenness that God is saying, hey, now is time. Now, now you're ready. Abraham talked with God, and he walked with God until 25 years went by, and then the baby was born. 
Cheryl, you know you're not going to have that, David. Cheryl, you know, honey, you know that ain't coming. Cheryl, honey, you know that ain't going to take place. But when there's crying in the tent, see, I don't know about you. I can only speak for me. I know what he's done for me. And he's done too much for me for me to sit down and fold my hands and hold back on God and not lift my hands and realize the power that is in us. Come on, the power that is in you is greater than the opposition that is coming at you. Once we can begin to understand the authority of God that is wanting to, uh, to flow out of us. Come on, he's wanting to heal everything around us. He's wanting to touch us. He's wanting to touch our family. He's wanting to set us free. Look, there is nothing that is any greater when you lay hands on somebody and they're in the same place that, that you was in and God bring, brings them out. Why? Because of a power that is in you. We cannot have that preconceived notion that it is not going to take place. We've got to realize that God is going to do everything that, that he said he would do. But first, he's got to work on us. God, whatever you got to do to me, I'm going to speak to that mountain every day. I'm going to speak to that problem every day. Why? I'm going to get the miracle. I'm going to step in the place of power. See, it's easy to play church. See, them fake flowers, I hope. You can spray them up, make them smell good, make them shine up, make them shine good, and put them beside the reel and make them smell just like the real. But to an untrained eye, you will never know which one's the real until you turn the honeybee loose. When are we really going to turn the Holy Ghost loose? See, God is not afraid of our words. We are afraid of his. Once God begins to say, hey, now step out up on the boat. Now step out and speak to the storm. It is amazing that Jesus, he, he was in a boat. He was asleep and water was coming in and it was raining. And the disciples cried, hey, we are going to drown. Look, here, here, here is the amazing point. The water didn't wake him up. The wind didn't wake him up, but a cry right of his children did. Look, there is something about Jesus. When I utter his voice, ah, when he hears my cry, when I utter the name of Jesus, hey, he's coming to calm the storm, but you got to take the limits right on off of your faith. Genesis 22 and 5, and Abraham, said unto, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham faced a dilemma that he never faced. Oh, he went through something that he never had to deal with. Just don't offer him for a sacrifice, but a burnt offering. Abraham said, God, I don't know what you're going to have to do. You may have to raise him up. I don't know what's going to take place. But this I know. Me and the lad's coming back here. I don't sir, stand your feet for me, please. Coming from side to side. He's going to come all the way around your body, sir, and begin, begin to touch the whole body. In the name of G Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Sir, I see about 41, 43. I see about 47 pounds just begin to start coming off. Right in the name of Jesus Christ, see, watch what the Holy Ghost does. Hallelujah, God. I praise you tonight, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Come on, folks. Come on.
if God will touch one, he'll touch another one. And if he'll heal one, he'll heal another one. And if he'll bless one, he'll bless another one. He didn't give us that word for one and one only. See, I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Ghost. You know why? I may, hey, hey, I may get to a red light, and I want to get, hey, look, I just may want to have a cuss out. That is why I need the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you. Look, look, I may be, hey, I may be behind somebody, and they are doing something, and I am in a hurry, and I'm ready to get around them. Come on. That is why I need the Holy Ghost. Tell me that we don't need it. I'm sorry. You stub your toe enough, you, you'll realize, God, I need you. My, Jacob said, Dad, it's a good thing you stutter. I said, why? He said, because nobody knows what you're saying anyway. Sister, coming down through your heart is going to touch your heart. There's some old heart issues that God is peeling off. And he's peeling off the callousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Something had to happen for you to really see him. Here is what's about to take place. Come on. It ain't time to fight it. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost, girl. Come on. Yeah! Yes! Hallelujah! Yes! Come on! Come on! Spirit of the living God, begin to blow in the name of Jesus. Fill her tonight, God, with the spirit of the living God. We have not because we ask not. It's time we ask him in faith and not wavering and not doubting. Come on, girl. Come on. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, sis. There it is. Come on, speak it on out. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on, folks. This is why we need the Holy Ghost. We need it to believe God. You cannot believe Him without the Holy Ghost. You know that language you are hearing in your mind that you don't understand? That is the Holy Ghost. Come on, it's time to speak it out. I don't care what it sounds like. Let it out. In the name It's a river that never runs dry. This river never runs dry. Hey, I need somebody who would dance for her. Come on, I need somebody who would just... Yeah! Glory! Hey! Don't tell me that he won't do it. Don't tell me that he won't do it. Come on, he'll do it.
but you got to take the limits off. Come on. You want to feel a miracle? Lay your hands on it. Come here. Pray for her. Pray for her. Sis, let him pray for you. Hey, sister, look at me. Come on, sis, look at me. Let him pray for you. God is going to pull a callus right on off your heart. Come on, son, lay, lay your hands on it. Come on, buddy. Come on, Brother Smith. Hallelujah tonight, God. God, remove the restraints. Remove the restraints tonight in the name of Jesus. Sweeter. Come on, it gets sweeter every day. Hello, sister, look at me. I see family, and I see family. And I see a stirring within the whole family. I don't know you, sis, and you don't know me, but I know what I see in the Holy Ghost. It's like there has been a wall, and I see God tearing down a wall, sis, and this thing, was, come on, it's crumbling. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you tonight. There are those that are coming into the house of God you've been praying for over and over and over, and now he's going to answer you. Jesus is going to answer. See, if, if we never take the limits off, we will never experience the power that we read in the book. In order to get it, I'm going to tell off on Jacob, okay? You can be seated for a minute. He bought a Jaguar. A couple of years ago, he bought a Jaguar. We went from Memphis, I mean from Little Rock to Memphis in an hour and a half. I said, son, how fast will it run? 174. That's the limit switch on it. I said, how fast have you had it? 174. I said, have you lost your mind? He said, Dad, why have all this power and not use it? Why do we have the power that is in the book and we don't use it? I don't know about you. That Duramax has got a V8. My angel drives a V12. You figure it out. Somewhere, if we don't take the limits off of us and our faith, we're going to keep wandering in the same circle and keep seeing the same view until we make up our mind. We're going to climb higher. We're going to go deeper. We're going to see miracles and signs and wonders and people getting the Holy Ghost. And we think it can't happen. God's waiting on us to pull the switch off. As the old farmer said, take, take the bridle off, watch it run. See, the promises of God 
don't come with an expiration date. Once he has made you a promise, it don't expire until you quit believing. When you quit believing, that is when the expiration date steps in. 25 years of nothingness. And then one day, one day, God answered. When it seemed like that it was so impossible, 90 years old. I'm too old, God. Quit telling yourself that you are too old to give birth to a promise that Jesus Christ has promised you. The weights, sir, that's been sitting on your shoulder is coming off. And I see a breath of fresh air coming into you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. You have wrestled with the word if. If I would have done this. If I would have done that. Sure, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his bottom every time he hopped. Come on, you got to get beyond if. Come on, you got to get beyond if. You got to make up your mind. I'm not going to say if anymore. I'm going to walk in the power of God. I'm going to walk in the anointing of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You cannot allow the failures of yesterday to hinder you to where you are going today. Failures will scream at you and hinder your faith and, and they'll stop you. Somewhere you, hey, you, you gotta look at the failure and say, go park somewhere, I'm going higher. Sister in the green, come on, lift your hands for me, please. Now, coming, coming about all oh, three quarters of the way down your backbone, just above L1, sis, coming all the way down. The Holy Ghost is going to push this over, and the stiffness in the lower back is going to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You've been wringing your hands over and over and over. When, 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 when? See, she's getting ready to answer. Come on, he's getting ready to answer. Come on, he's getting ready to answer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I praise you tonight, God. Hello, sis, stand your feet for me, please. Yes, ma'am, hello. Come on, chop, chop. Is you married? Where's he at? It's going to shake him up. It's going to bring him to a place of repentance. <clears throat> the hardness and the roughness that has been in the heart. When the enemy would have snuffed him out of this world, the Holy Ghost said no because you've been praying for that man. Come on. Your prayer, sister, has kept him alive. Hello, sis, look at me. The fear is going to break off of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Quit fearing, girl. Come on. It's time to take a deep breath and say, hey, I'm not going to be sick. I'm going to be whole. There is nothing going to shackle me. Hello, come on. There is nothing that is going to hold me in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Come on. Yes. You've been so worried and so worried and so worried. Quit worrying. 
We allow fear to dictate everything that we are going to do. I'm sorry. I'm not going to walk in fear. Hallelujah, God. Hello, sis. Stand on your feet for me, please. How old are you? 21, 20, 26. You married? I didn't think so. I'm going to tell you something. When JR shows up, just right. God love me. Okay. Maybe very short. Short courtship. Hello, I do, you do. Let's go. The worry and the folly has tried to just shackle you so much and keep you right, right here running circles in your mind over and over and over. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Look, it's time to let God. Come on. Come on. There is a self-esteem, sis, that God, he's trying to break through this self-esteem and build your faith. Quit telling yourself that, that you cannot. Come on, quit telling yourself that you cannot. Come on, girl, you can. Come on, girl, you can. Greater, greater, greater is he. Sister, there is one that is not in the house of God, and they try to put a damning on your faith. It's time to say click and just cut them loose right in the name of Jesus Christ. See ya. Don't, don't want to be ya. Why? Because I'm tired of you draining my faith. Tell that self-esteem it's time to go hey to go take a hike somewhere in the name of Jesus. God, I'm gonna climb. God, I'm gonna climb. I'm going to obtain the promise. I'm going to obtain the blessing, God. It God is mine. I'm going to inherit it in the name of Jesus Christ. See, God don't just speak to one. We was preaching in, in a Tennessee one night, and there was a lady on the right-hand side of the house, the Holy Ghost minister to her, and says, Sis, in 14 days you're going to move into your house. The lady on the left side of the house said, God, I need a house right, right now. And she grabbed the word, and in seven days that lady moved in her house. That is how faith works. And see, so we got to step beyond what, what we cannot see. As long as we can see it, it's not faith, it's not hope. But when you can't see it, when you don't know where to put your foot next, when you don't know what to pray next, that's when faith kicks in. Can I show you how the Holy Ghost works? Can I really just show you how he works, okay? Hello, young man. You got like you're scared to death. You in a blue shirt. Come here. Oh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Come on, man. Chop, chop. I need you right here. Jesus. <whistles> See, I like to have a good time. I'm going to laugh at you, and I'm going to laugh at me. Come here. Come here. Turn around. All right. Here's how faith is going to work. And here's how the Holy Ghost works. God, God, uh, the gifts of the Spirit work, work in unity and love. You gonna hear me say something, and everybody's gonna hear me say something, but uh, but you gonna speak it, okay? Come here, sis. 
Well, yes, ma'am. Come here and stand here in front of him. Face him. Is this okay, Pastor? Tell her that the Holy Ghost is going to change her finances. Tell her that he's going to build the bank account and turn the job around. Tell her that the very fear that has been coming at her that God is loosening tonight. Lay your hands on her and, and command it to leave. Come on, sir. Come on, here is how he works. Here is how he works. This is why we got to take the limits of faith. Why are we wanting to shackle him when he says, turn me loose? Where are you going? Don't, don't leave. This is how the gifts of the Spirit work. Right here. Since you can be seated. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. I like this. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. You worried, oh, Jesus. Limits are boundaries. Limits are there to keep us in. Limits are there to stop us from reaching the next place in God. Limits are there to try to shackle us and keep our faith undercover to where that it cannot see the light. But once we can see the light of God, go and look in parking lots and you see a sprig of grass are coming up. It's been run over. It's been under the heat. Come on, it's had water over it and a long time coming. And then the concrete breaks and there's a beam of light that touches that seed. And then here comes the grass through all amidst of adversity. It comes up through the concrete and it grows and it grows in and it grows through a broken piece that says you're never going to do anything but be a seed. But once the light reaches the seed, the limit has been busted open in that concrete. And now the beam of light and the water of God and the word of God and the faith of God has touched the seed and it begins to grow. That's why we got to take the limits off. It's time to cut some situations loose, sir, and just let the Holy Ghost. I see two men, but yeah, I see three, and they're pulling on you. They're wanting somebody to hold the bag, and guess what? You're it. You know what they're doing? time to cut them cats loose and stay in the house of God and watch what Jesus Christ to do. Come on, sir. That's right. I don't know you and you don't know me, okay? Hallelujah, Jesus. Say boo. Say boo. Tell that devil, say, ha ha, I win. Come on. Tell fear, ha ha, I win. Here is what the Holy Ghost is really wanting to do for you, sis. He's wanting to release a power in you that you have never experienced. Here is where it comes from. It comes from the Holy Ghost. That is why we got to take the limits off God. I don't care what has happened in the past. Since the past is over, it's gone. But there is a power that God is wanting to tap into you. Come on, it's time to open that door. Come on, sis, he's been knocking on your heart. He's been knocking on your door over and over. Come on. Hallelujah. Let him fill you with the Holy Ghost, girl. Come on, let him do it. 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 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Change is one of the hardest things that, that we've got to adjust to. You know why? Because it, it requires our flesh to line up with our spirit. And if you'll let the Holy Ghost says, he, he'll pull this weight off of you that has been right here, been... There has been a spirit. I'm going to call it for a full what it is. Go out behind the house. Go ahead. Nobody will know. I'm sorry. That, that's a lie from the pits of hell. You are needed in the kingdom of God. Come on. You are needed in the house of God. You are needed here in the name of G Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I praise you today, O Lord. Man, this church has got bigger since Sunday. Whew. You really ready to see it change? Praise him in a dance and just, and just watch him break it. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello, Elder. I lift both hands for me, sir. You with the white shirt. Come on, lift, lift both hands for me. God, you touch his lungs tonight. God, you touch his heart tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Command it to be right. Command it to be strong in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. God, you push the blood right. Let it go into the feet right in the name of Jesus Christ. Let not his feet hurt anymore, God. Let them not burn no more. It, in the name of Jesus, I do thank you tonight, God. I'm trying, okay? I'm really trying. Let's see, by my watch, it's just 712. I'm going to tell you something. If you like your seat, you better start coming early because you're liable coming and somebody's going to be in it. We're praying this morning. And I said, God, what am I seeing? And he said, look again. You was in the house of God Sunday, and the balcony was full. They was lined up against the walls. The aisles were full. They was packed up against the altar. They wanted a move of God. They wanted something. Come on. You, hey, look, we have the power to change the world. All right, okay. Romans 4, 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. You couldn't talk him out of it. If Sarah would have lived to be 300 years old and not had Isaac, she would have had him at 301. Come on. Preacher, that sounds a little bit crazy. You can call it whatever you want to. I'm going to stay with the word. Come on. As long as we will believe the word of God, anything is possible. To them that believe... Joshua 4, 14 and 12. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that there were cities great and walled and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Here's where, we're, here's where I really want to get to. Divine delays are not hindrances. They are platforms for the miraculous. 
divine delays that looks like it's not going to happen, it's not going to come, it's not going to take place, God is not going to answer, I might as well just sit here and die because he has not come, but a divine delay, come on, it is a hindrance that says that God is going to work a greater miracle. <gasps> First Kings 17 and verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two, two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. She come to her last resource. She thought it was over and God God done talk to the man of God. I'm sending you to a widow woman, and she is going to sustain you. The Bible says that he was at Cherith, and the word Cherith means a cutting. So God had to cut some things off of Elijah. There are some things that God, hey, he's got to cut off of us and say, look, now it's time to speak to the meal barrel. Come on, now I'm going to sustain you. Now I'm going to help you. Now I'm going to feed you. Now I'm going to bless you. You. Now I'm gonna help. Hey, I'm gonna help you through this. And Elijah said unto her, "Fear not." Well, that's a good word to say when you ain't got nothing else in the barrel. Preacher, you lost your mind. Oh, go get me a drink of water. Look, it didn't rain. Water was precious. Where was you at when the drought started? Where was you at whenever they said no? Where was you at whenever the bank said that we can't do this? Whenever, uh, uh, where, uh, where was you at when everybody says, look, dude, you're going to jail? Then God shows up in a divine delay. Make me a cake first. And then go back and make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. To do the impossible, we must be in touch with the invisible. We've got to be in touch with him. Sometimes it takes an overwhelming breakdown to have an undeniable breakthrough. Things just got to be overwhelmingly breaking you down to a point that you think that you cannot lift your head up anymore. And then God shows up with an undeniable breakthrough. When we come to a point that we think that we can't take it anymore, that's when he moves the most. That's when God steps in and says, okay, I'm ready. I've waited for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Sis with the polka dots, come on, stand to your feet for me, please. The pressure right here is going to stop, sis. Come on. You have fought this battle for a long time. Sis, you have fought a battle that has been un, unrelenting. Unrelenting, excuse me. This thing has been coming at you over and over and over. It's almost like you get over the hump and it pulls you back down. And it tries to keep you in that place. No more, sis. It's time for the breakthrough. Come on, it's time for the breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Sis, I see you standing at a kitchen sink. God, when is it going to be my time? Sis, it's now. Come on, it's now. You're coming through this? Come on, sis. Hey, you're coming through this? You're... 
The battle is over. Come on, the battle is over. The battle is over. The stress is leaving. God is providing. girl go ahead he's healing you tonight come on he's healing you tonight yes come on out into the aisle dancing is a celebration of what God has done come on girl praise him in a dance go ahead you got the strength to do it you've got the energy to do it come on yes yes And this is a confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, we know that we have that petition that we desire of him. Go ahead. The energy's coming back. Come on, the energy's coming back. Come on, sister, look at me. The firing mechanisms in your brain is going to fire right. Coming to the back of your head is going to fire right. And the mind's going to be clear. And the thought will be clear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you tonight, God. Give me just a few minutes. Come on, I'm, 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 I'm trying to wind down. A man named Jerry, as he come to Jesus, my daughter is dying. She, she's at home. Jesus is on his way. The woman with the issue of blood, she delays him. And then the Bible says in the book of St. Luke, in Luke 8 and verse 49, while he spake, there, there, there come one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Some of you in here, you got dreams and you have visions that you think are dead. We are in a microwave society. Put it in, it's done. When all the kids are together, we go to my daughter's house and She'll say, what do y'all want to eat? And they'll say, Mama, we want some beef tips and rice and some turnip greens and black-eyed peas and cornbread. And I'm going, yes. She loves them so much that she takes the time and prepares everything. God loves us so much that he takes time. And he prepares the very thing that we need that is going to catapult us to the next place in God. She's dead. She's dead. It's over. And we allow the words of somebody else to come into our ears and we start believing what they're saying instead of what the Holy Ghost is saying to us. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. I come to tell somebody tonight, when you take the limits off your faith, the very vision and the very dream that, that you've had, that you have prayed for for so long, and it has not happened yet, you have put it on, the, you have laid it on the grave, and you said it's over. You have quit believing again. 
But I come to tell you, I know a God that will resurrect a dream. Stand with me. Somebody come to the music, please. God is wanting to resurrect a dream for you. Take the limits off God. The miraculous cannot take place until you begin to unshackle yourself. There's only some things that you can do for you. Nobody else can do it. Somebody can pray you out of where you are, but until you pray you out of where you are, it's not going to stick. Once we release the limits, there's no telling what God can do. I can imagine the, the apostle Peter in Matthew 14 when he said, Jesus, if this is you, bid me to come to you on the water. The storm was raging, the wind blowing, the waves high, and he puts his legs out of the boat and everybody's going, man, you have lost your mind. You are going to drown. And I believe the very instant that he let go of the boat, it was gone. The only thing that he had to walk on was eye to eye with Jesus. Faith. I'm no longer confined to the walls of a safety system. I'm out now in the storm. And the only thing that I have to see is him. I can't pay attention to the waves. I can't pay attention to the howling of the wind. A sea is a type of people. Could it be that there are those that have screamed at you long enough and told you that you are crazy for believing in something that you hadn't seen come to pass yet? And that's why we have begun to sink believing in a dream or a vision that we hadn't seen yet. Take your limits off. Can you imagine when he held on to Jesus and they stepped in the boat together and the wind ceased? Can you imagine what, what it was like when they hit the seashore? Jesus may have got a little way from them and they said, Peter, what was it like? Oh my God, the most phenomenal thing that has ever happened. The waves were splashing on my feet. Any moment could have been my last moment in this world, but when I started to sing, I cried, Jesus. I cried, Jesus. And I now, and now, and now, I'm not going down no more. He held me. Come on, He held me. And we walked together upon the very thing that has troubled me. Some of you in here within the sound of my voice, a storm has troubled you. The enemy says it's over. Sorry, it's not over until Jesus says it's over. There's a little girl in Augusta, Georgia. I think she's nine or ten. She may be ten. This girl, this lady had a miscarriage. She was carrying something and she fell. And she had a miscarriage. And the, and, and the doctor said, Miss Plyler, he said, Lisa, I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. You're not going to bear children. But God had other things in mind. On a faithful night in service, the Holy Ghost said, there will be children born in the house. 
And she calls me and my wife, me, me and Pops. Ten years. Hadn't seen her in a couple years. Brian Plyler said, Brother Phillips, she can hear a diesel truck come, uh, come by. Is that me, me and Pops coming back? Come on. Once you take the limits off and quit doubting the very thing that God is wanting to do for you. There is a miraculous provision that is out of this world. It is unbelievable. But here's the kicker. You got to tap into it. Some of you in here, there is a potential in you that is unbelievable, a soul winner. But the enemy has kept you so timid and put back in a shelter. You got to take the limits off. How can you tell somebody that God's a healer if he's never healed you? Seventeen years old, I was an alcoholic. When they start the AA meeting, this is the way they say it. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm a delivered. You got to take the limits off you. Somebody else can't do it. The company I worked for, before we started evangelizing, I was working 18, 16, 18 hours a day. Every day. Looked in the mirror and I said, Keith Phillips, you're not the praying man you was. What's happened? What's happened? I had to come to a realization, as long as I chase the things in this world, that's all I'm going to have. But when I chase him, the sky is the limit. There is no limit of what he will do for you, but you got to take the limits off. Here's one in the altar. Come on, is there more? Come on, is there more? I'm going to open this altar up this way. If you're hungry for God, make your way to this altar. God, tonight, I hunger and I thirst for the living God. God, I hunger and thirst for something that I cannot get from man. It only comes from you. I've tried it my way. I've tried it my way. Believe again. Believe again. Oh, Jesus. Let Hear your it. Faith rise up Come on. To higher ground. Reach out to somebody. Reach over and put your hand on somebody's shoulder. Make that connection with somebody. Come on, you gotta trust him when you don't even understand it.
God. Let's clap our hands and give God praise tonight. God, aren't you glad you're in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Thank God for what we've received in this house. Amen. What a touch of heaven. Amen. Come down in this place tonight. Amen. Everybody say revival. Amen. Back in church Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Amen. Brother Phillips and Sister Phillips is going to be here. You bring somebody with you to the house of the Lord. Amen. It's time to have a move of God. Amen. Let's watch God fill this place up. In Jesus' name, if we'll do our part, I promise you, he'll do his. Amen. God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Ask the Lord to go with us. Jesus, you've been so mighty good to us. We're thankful for the visitation of your spirit that's been here tonight. Thank you for every touch. Pray that, Lord, as we leave tonight, you'd go home with us. Your hand would be upon us. You'd protect us and keep us safe. Pray that, God, you'd help us to bring somebody with us to the house of the Lord on Sunday. God, your spirit would fall mightily, not only in this church, but all across this city. You give us a great revival. Give us boldness, dominion, and courage. Let us walk in your anointing. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord.